Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time and I'm here for another this and that video to show you what's going on around here today or at least this week. So this is actually the week after Thanksgiving, uh, the day that I'm shooting this video so I know by the time you see this is going to be mid late till late December because I'm three weeks ahead of my video to keep myself prepped. But um, I have several things I wanted to talk about. I got some wonderful gifts from a couple of subscribers and I wanted to share some of this stuff with you. If you're new to my channel, one of the reasons for these type of videos is to answer a few questions as well as link people back to other videos I have in regards to some of these different things so you can see what's going on and what I've already done. Alright, right here I have some castor oil. I'll link to this particular castor oil below and I've been using castor oil a lot lately and I'll be talking about it more in an upcoming video that's also going to involve turpentine of all things. Yes, taking it internally as well as externally. I'll cover that there. I'm still getting it together and I have some things that I want to do a little more research on and also continue to watch how it works in myself. I've been using turpentine off and on for a couple of years but um, I'm just getting back into it and decided now would be a good time to talk about it. You know, back to the castor oil, one of the things I wanted to mention is in the homemade mascara, I like to make a big batch like this and I keep it in the fridge. I add colloidal silver to it, lavender oil, and things like that, and that also is not only good for your hair, you know, your eyelashes, but it will help preserve it for a longer period of time. I've never had any issues. Now when my mascara starts to dry out a little bit, I don't know if I covered it in the, in the how to make mascara video, but I do like to add a little colloidal copper to it, just keep putting that in there, spray it in there if it feels like it's getting dried out, even though I keep a good tight lid on it, which is what you need to do. And again, keep it refrigerated. But um, the colloidal copper and or colloidal silver, again, it helps prevent it from spoiling, but it also will help keep it, you know, if it just starts getting a little dry. But the other thing I wanted to mention that I'm pretty sure isn't in that video, let me link to that video right here before I forget about how to make your own homemade natural mascara. But I have started adding a couple of drops of the castor oil into the mascara blend. I believe that really helps to help keep the mascara uh, flexible. It also helps keep it from drying out. And it, I just had really good results. And uh, if you know anything about castor oil, it's really good at helping to promote hair growth. Okay, and then for another thing I wanted to talk about, and that is vinegar. Um, actually, my last couple of this and that videos, I don't think I talked about vinegar, but I will today. This one is ready to strain. Uh, I only have, this time of year, I only have one to three vinegars going at a time. I do most of them in the summer and fall. But uh, this is calendula rose and rosemary. So it's got rose petals, uh, calendula flowers, and rosemary. And I made this one specifically to be for a hair wash, though it would make an excellent uh, vinegar for cleaning with. Now, as you can see, there's not any mold. There's not, this one doesn't even have a mother growing on the top. What I find with my herbal ones, I don't usually get a good scoby growing on the top like I do with the apple in particular. My last one, uh, the apple one that I just strained out a couple days ago, it had a very thick scoby on it. And I did show it in my community page here on YouTube. You can go over to the community section and look down. Again, it's kind of like Facebook because I can post anything I want, pictures and all kinds of stuff. But I'll go ahead and put a picture of that scoby right here and what it looked like. Now, typically what I do with the vinegar scobies is I don't reuse them. I don't use them to start more vinegar. I just make the vinegar with the sugar and the fruit and or the herbs and, and water, of course. Now, I have vinegar making videos. I'll go ahead and link to my most current one right up here. It is how to make calendula vinegar. That's just, uh, and that will apply to all your different vinegars that you plan to make. But I also want to steer you towards the Q&A vinegar video I did because I still have a lot of people coming in asking the same questions and I did a video just on that and I'll link to that one right up here but let me talk a little bit about that vinegar scoby. What I like to do with mine is just feed it to the chickens. The chickens love it and it's really healthy for them. 
what I would like to do the next time I get a good healthy SCOBY, which should be on the next apple one. I have it because I made an apple pie for Thanksgiving, so I started another batch of apple vinegar using the scraps from that. And if I get a good SCOBY on that, like I have on my other fruit ones, the fruit ones just give the best, give you the best SCOBYs. I am going to try converting that into a kombucha SCOBY. It should be pretty easy to do. Now remember when I was trying the, the thing with trying to make my own kombucha SCOBY? It started to form one, but it never quite finished. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I didn't have enough sugar. Now Kathleen said that she's done that. It takes a while. But I think what I'm going to do is just simply convert a vinegar one. I know it can be done because I've read about it before. And I will update you on that when I get to that. I just have to wait for a good SCOBY to form. I might even have some forming back in my cabinet where I keep all my vinegar. So I'll check that. But anyway, this is a, just a beautiful color. I'm going to be straining this out today. So um, if you're interested in learning how to make your own vinegar, it's very easy. It has many uses. I also have a video that I'm not going to link to because I still have up here because I still have a lot more to talk about and to link to. So it, you can go find it. If you just type vinegar on my, on my own page, you will find all kinds of videos. And I do have one specifically on the uses for your homemade vinegar because I have lots and lots of uses. I, that's why I make so much because the more I make it, the more uses I find for it. So then I have to make more of it to keep up on it. But I use it in my laundry, I use it on my hair, I use it for cooking, baking, cleaning, just pretty much anything you can think of. And uh, make cheese making. <laughs> so anyway, check that video out if you're interested in learning. Now, one of the things I need to get done hopefully today, I've already done a couple batches uh, yesterday is I'm, I've been running low on some of the certain flavors of lip balm up on my store. So my lip balm is a herbal, you know, it's got an herb infused oil in it plus coconut oil and beeswax. I have a video on how you can make your own lip balm. I'm not going to link that one here. What I'm going to do is link to you the video of this one where Mr. Rain made the lip balm holder. So that when I'm making the lip balms, I can put the empty containers in here and fill them, and this is, you know, a nice weight. I don't have to worry about them tipping over. They sit in there real nice and secure, and it works really good, and I just, I just love this thing. So it's what I use now when I, and here's some empty containers right here, and it's what I use now when I'm making lip balm. See, just like that, and then you just, you just fill them, and it works really good. Okay, and then right here, I have a pomegranate. Woo, how exciting. Well, I don't buy pomegranates very often because around here they're pretty expensive. I'm sure they're probably pretty expensive everywhere. But I saw them on sale. I think they were two for three dollars, which is a really good price for here. And so I bought a couple as a treat for myself because I just love pomegranate. And I wanted to show this. I wanted to bring this up because Stacy from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy did a video showing the easiest way to open a pomegranate and to get all the seeds out and it was pretty ingenious and I'm going to go ahead and link to her video right up here because I'd like you to go check that out if you haven't subscribed to Doug and Stacy yet you really need to do that I think most people know who they are but uh, I know I've been following them for a few years now and I they're just really great people Stacy and I are friends we get to talk on the phone every so often and just real they're real people they're, um, they have a lot of great information, both of them have a lot of great information to share. So I recommend you check them out. Now, another channel I want you to check out is Mary's Nest. And I'm going to link to her channel right up here. And I really want you to check her out. She's a super sweet lady. We've become pretty good friends. Uh, she's been very supportive of me and my channel and what I do here. She's bought a couple of aprons from me and a skirt and she's always sending me gifts. Very wonderful lady. And I wanted to show you the, um, the last gift that she sent me was this America's Garden book. Now this was printed I believe in 1952 and Mary knows how much I love vintage and antique books. And a uh, lot of really good information here. Uh, not all of it is necessarily organic on dealing with gardens, but there's a lot of organic stuff because this was back when they, they had DDT, but back before they really got into the serious, you know, chemical pesticides and fertilizers and all that. So it, it you know, it has a lot that involves even using lemon oil and things like that for, 
uh, a pesticide and, and different things, fungicides and stuff. Really good book, very informative, and uh, much appreciated, Mary. Thank you so much. And then another one she sent was Pacific Northwest Medicinal Plants. So this one's specifically for my area and specifically about medicinal plants. Really just, I am so excited about this. And uh, very cool, Mary, I appreciate this so much. What, what a kind and generous and thoughtful gift for her to send. Now, while I'm talking about gifts, oh, and her lovely little card that she sent. Just super sweet lady. Another gift I got the same day was this whole set of Tatler lids. Not just what you see in the boxes, but also this big bag of Tatler lids. Tina sent those to me. And Tina, thank you so much. Again, what another very thoughtful gift, knowing how much I love Tatler, and I'd been needing some more Tatler lids. Thank you so much for that. It's, uh, it really means a lot to, to both of us, actually. Okay, moving on. I want to show you the grains I have soaking that I need to get uh, rinsed out and on my wood stove drying out. And you can see how bubbly it is. Because what I've been doing is actually allowing them to ferment a little bit before I rinse them. Instead of just letting them sit 24 hours, I let them sit, I find two days to be perfect. Because by then they're, they're bubbly and fermenty. Um, after two days it starts, the flavor gets a little stronger than I like. But I do like the flavor and the health benefits it gives soaking the berries like this. Now the dark spots you see are buckwheat. And yes, the buckwheat still has the uh, hulls on them. <laughs> I got the buckwheat from Azure Standard, and I'll be talking about Azure Standard in another video. But um, so far I've been really happy with it, and actually the first thing I did was I ground them up with the holes and everything, and used them in the bread, and didn't have a bit of problem with it. And uh, it, they didn't bother us at all, I've been actually just fine with it. However, if you have gut issues, it's really recommended that you remove the holes from the uh, from the growths, I call them berries because I'm used to saying wheat berries. Uh, they're uh, buckwheat groats and you remove the hulls. Now you can also buy buckwheat groats that have the hulls already removed. But one way to do it that's actually pretty simple is if you have the, the hulls on there, if you run it through your grain mill, the hulls do kind of get separated out. They come out like sort of big pieces and then you can simply sift them out or shake it through one of your uh, mesh strainers and that's going to get those holes out if you're concerned about that and it, and it is again recommended if you have gut problems but I'm hoping soaking them would also help with that as well anyway um, I'm liking the buckwheat a lot mixed in with the with the wheat bread the last batch of bread I made I'll show right here that was using uh, buckwheat uh, and then the, the two white wheat berries that I like which is soft white and hard white plus the spelt berries really like the overall flavor and texture of it and then using the homemade fermentation starter along with the yeast the powdered yeast really gives it a good rise and just made it nice and fluffy and wonderful so when you're using all these grains and I like to add other seeds like flax seed poppy seed chia seed or the zucchini powder and um, you know, it can make the bread kind of heavy so that using that homemade fermentation starter in there with the dry yeast really makes it fluffy and I've been very happy with this here. So I've got my stainless steel uh, mesh colander that I strain these out and then rinse them in and then just put them on my stoneware cookie sheet and then dry them. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, and as I said, that the time I'm shooting this video, it's actually the week after... Thanksgiving. So you can imagine, I always like to buy a huge turkey because I like lots of leftover turkey. And I plan on today, I've already made, you know, turkey gravy, you know, I have a video on that as well. I'll try to link to that one at the end of, the, end of this one. Uh, you know, the turkey gravy, it's a white gravy, and, and we like to serve it over rice. That's one of our favorite dishes. In fact, traditionally, we have that the day after Thanksgiving. And then today what I want to do is, and I've already made turkey soup with the bones, and we still have a bunch of that left, and it turned out amazing, using my own homegrown and dehydrated uh, green beans and snow peas. Oh my gosh, so good. But anyway, tonight what I'm making is a turkey and biscuit pot pie. So I have a video that I'll go ahead and link to 
um, at the end of this one. That will be the uh, last video I link to at the end, and that is the uh, chicken and biscuit pot pie. I'll be doing the same idea using the turkey. Now, I like to make pot pies both ways. I like to do it with a regular pie crust, and I have videos on that as well. You'll probably have to do a search because I'm going to run out of places to link. Um, remember, you can search for anything right on my page by putting it into the little the little bar with the spyglass next to it and just type in what you're looking for and you should be able to pull it up. But anyway, the chicken and biscuit pot pie, I got the idea from my son's fiance and then um, just made it up as I went. And it just is so good. It's one of my favorites. So when I'm having chicken or turkey and I'm making a pot pie, that's my favorite way to make pot pie. If I'm using beef or venison or elk, then I like to do it the traditional way with the regular pie crust. So yeah, that's what's for dinner tonight. And uh, there we go. So I hope that gives you an idea of some of the things you can do with your leftover turkey. If you still have some, now if you're like me, I like to take it and freeze it into batches using the food saver and the little food saver bags and then freeze big batches of it like that so I can continue to make things like turkey pot pie and turkey gravy over rice and turkey this and turkey that throughout the year until it's all gone. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.